If you are looking for an in-depth video on how to set up a multi-language website with an Umbaco V9 and above, then this, my great friend, is the video for you. Now, if you haven't come across me before, I'm John and I've been working with Umbraco for a long time. And in this video, I'm going to show you everything. So we'll learn how to set up multiple languages in the CMS, how to update your document types so they work for those different languages. We'll be looking at routing. So it's making sure that each one of your language specific pages has a unique URL so it doesn't 404 and site visitors can see it. And then finally, we're going to wrap up by creating a language switcher, making sure that all the code within our controllers are boss. Now, for doing all of this, all I ask from you is two little things. It won't cost you any money. Number one is smash that subscribe button. Then click on the like button. Doing this basically means you won't lose my content. Also means that the YouTube algorithm will help share my video to more people. And I greatly appreciate it because it takes me a lot of time and effort to do these videos. And as a massive thank you, because I know everyone's done that, I'm going to show you a picture of a happy looking gopher. Mm. So, enough of this nonsense, let's get on and start building some cool shiznit. As always, all the code that you're about to see for this Embraco series is available for my starter kit. So you can clone it, have a look at it in your own time. So to access the sample site, go to my GitHub, which is John D. Jones. On the homepage, I've pinned my Embraco V9 starter kit. If you want to be a ledge, star it and follow me. Otherwise, let's look at enabling some languages. Whenever you install a new instance of Umbraco, it's going to be configured in single language mode. So we need to fix this. And we can do that by going to the settings section. Clicking on settings, you'll find an option within here, which is called languages. Clicking on this language node, it's going to open up this big list. By default, your list is going to probably have a single intro in it, and it's going to be English United States. So as you'd probably guess, add in multiple languages, click on the big add language button. From this screen, we can select the, the language that we want to work with. So we can see that we've got a whole host of things here. Now, one of the options we have is to make any language the default language. So when the website first loads, this is going to be the language that it defaults to. The other nice thing we can do is make something a mandatory language. Now, mandatory languages can be really handy in terms of content editing governance. Now let's say that we've created a page and we have English, French and German. If we don't set something as a mandatory language, what can happen is a content editor could create the page in English, forget to add it in French and German and then publish the page. What will happen is, you know, we'll never know that we've missing the French and the German content. So setting something as mandatory will basically mean that you have to add in the English, French and German content. That all has to exist before anyone can publish anything. And if you don't, you're going to get a big warning. So I recommend in general, you make everything mandatory just so we have all the content. Now, if you go, I don't like your advice. You're a bit of a massive wally. The other option you could do is make a language optional. And then when you're having optional languages, you can use the fallback language. So in this instance, you could say, I might have forgot to add in the French and German. However, I don't care. Just default back to English United States whenever someone tries to access that page. After we've created these languages, our next step is to update our document types to work in multi-language mode as well. So by default, everything's set to work in single language mode. So to update our document types, within the same settings section, click on a document type and find any one in the list. So I have this base template here. Now to enable this template or document type to work in multi-language mode, head over to the permissions tab and within permissions, we have this allow very culture. So ticking on this basically means, yep, allow it to work with different languages and Breco. Cheers, bud. After enabling multi-language mode at the document type level, you're also going to have to go through each property on that document type and also say this is allowed to work with multiple languages. We do this from the design tab. Clicking on design, you can see here that I've got this keyword property. Clicking on this little cog item here is going to pop up a little menu. And from here, you can see that we've got this allow vary by culture. This needs to be enabled as well. And this means that we can add content within whatever languages we have defined. So I have a bit of a better example here with my blog post. Clicking on the subtitle, you can see that we're allowing vary by culture. And then clicking on the title, 
you can see that we're disallowing that option. Now, if I go to a blog page within the CMS, if I change the language, and I can do that by either changing the drop down here, as you can see, United States or Nepalese. I can also change the language in the top left here and do it on a whole site basis. So let's say that I change the language to Nepalese. As you can see, the subtitle is editable, the content is editable, the title is editable. However, this, this property here, because we haven't enabled that allow vary by culture, this is not editable. So when you're doing multi-language, if you come to a document type and something's not editable, you need to go back to that document type because you'll probably need to tick a box somewhere. Doing this for every single document type and every single property can be very painful. The plus side is it gives you very good fine level of control over what can be multiple languages and what doesn't need to be multi-language content. So it is a plus, however, the setup. Our next consideration is routing and URL structure. In single language mode, things are pretty fine and dandy, we don't need to worry. The URL maps to a single node inside the CMS. However, whenever we enable multiple languages in the CMS, a node is going to have different variations. This means we're going to have to have different URLs to point to each variation. Because remember, every single content on our website needs a unique URL, otherwise no one will be able to access it. Now, when it comes to URL strategies, there's basically two approaches you can take. We can have the subcategory or the subdomain approach. Now, in the subdomain approach, which is my favorite, if you have a URL strategy favorite, in subdomain, as you all probably know, is you prefix your site with a language variation. So what we're gonna do, imagine our website is called www.website.com, because I'm very imaginative. In a subdomain strategy, we're gonna have uk.website.com, fr.website.com for French, de.website.com for German. So now in a subcategory structure, we're going to take that language variation and we're going to append it at the end of the URL rather than the beginning of it. So in this strategy, we're going to have website.com slash en, website.com slash fr, and website.com slash de. Hmm. Now the choice is yours. We, in the subdomain category, you're going to have to go into your DNS provider, whether that's Cloudflare, GoDaddy, wherever it might be. And for each subdomain that you want to enable, you're going to have to create an A record in there, which points to your server. So there's a little bit of DNS work. I mean, it's not really that hard. Setting up an A record takes you a few seconds. There are two benefits with the subcategory approach. Now, the first one is that we don't need to worry about routing at all. So we don't need to go into our routing provider, hosting provider, anything like that. We have complete control how to decide how our routing works within either the CMS itself or at the code level. The second benefit with the subcategory approach depends on how you structure your website. So, so far in this video, I'm assuming that you're creating a website and the page structure is very similar between all the different language variations. Now, what happens if you're creating a site and English and French and German, they're completely different. So they have completely different page structures. They're not related anyway. They're pretty much just three independent websites within the same company. In these instances, trying to force feed everything into one single website instance inside Umbraco doesn't make sense. So what we can do in these instances is create three different home pages and basically treat each site as a separate website. Now, when we're using a subcategory approach, we could call the English homepage EN, we could call the French homepage FR, but this means that our routing is going to automatically work. We don't need to do anything else because as soon as we have FR, it's going to load up the French homepage. As soon as someone goes to EN, it's going to load up the English one. So there is definitely a load of considerations about your domain strategy. I will cover this in more detail in the related tutorial. However, I recommend that you have a good think, make sure you know exactly what you do before you launch your site, because changing it afterwards is going to affect your SEO. So make sure you think about it, you little scamp. After deciding which URL strategy that you're going to go for, you need to apply those changes within the CMS. And this is done on the homepage level. So within your content section, find your homepage node, click on the little ellipses, open up our Umbraco context menu. From here, we're going to click on culture and host names. And as you can see in this example here, we've got the option of adding a new domain. And what you want to do is basically add in a domain 
for each one of your language variations. Now, because I'm in development, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to have my local host. But as you can see, 78 here maps to Nepalese, 79 maps to the English. So if I click save, if I go to this website, click refresh, you can see that I've got this Nepalese translation. And if I go back to my site here, go to my cultures, let's just switch this around, English homepage, click save. What we can do is do a refresh, and as you can see, I've now got my English content. So let's turn our attention away from configuring things inside the CMS, and let's start focusing in on how to create a multi-language website at the code level. Mm. This is where the good stuff comes in. Now, in the majority of cases, whenever that you're querying Umbraco, as long as you have the domains and URL set up correctly, all the content is going to automatically be converted into the correct language for you. However, there's going to be often times when you want to manually query on Bracket yourself. And when you do this, you want to make sure that the correct language version is returned. Now, in order to do this, you'll need to pass in a culture code, country code, whatever you want to call it. Now, this code is a standard. It's called the ISO 639-1, rolls off the tongue, I know. This standard basically says for each country in the world, there's an identifier. We can then use that identifier to swap languages. Mm, exciting stuffs. Now, when it comes to just the API in Umbraco in general, let's say that we've got our model which has been generated by the Umbraco model builder. If we just do say like blog dot value, pass in an alias, you can see the second parameter is we can pass in this culture string. So what we could do in this instance is do en dash us hard code it and this is going to return my us content now if i change this to i think just ne we're going to get our nepalese content job is a good one. now obviously hard coding data like this is naff what we want to do is have everything work auto magically and beautifully for us and this is where we can use some apis now back in dotnet framework to do this kind of stuff, we used to use the current thread object and bizarrely in .NET Core, it still exists. I think this is basically just for legacy compatibility. But as you can see underneath us, we have this thread, current thread dot current UI culture and current culture. And I set my breakpoint here, but you can see that the culture info is NE for Nepalese. And you can also see that the culture info is NE for Nepalese or Nepali. So instead of having to manually hard code stuff, we can use these thread.current thread UIs. There is also an additional way of doing this. However, this is not working on this site and I've run out of time. There's only so much I can do. But as you can see here, we also have this I request culture feedback. Using this I request culture feedback, I'm currently getting a load of dependency injection errors. So when you're setting up, I recommend you go that route. However, if you struggle, it's worth knowing you can still use this classic old thread.current blah, blah, blah. Now, when you're using this code, you might find that out of the box, this capability is not going to work for you. And that's because you now need to add in a little bit of config inside of classic old startup.cs. But basically within our configure method, we're going to need to add in some code, which is going to look like this. So as you can see, we need to define the supported cultures. As you can see, I've got EN US. I could add in my NE in here if I wanted to. NE. Go Nepal. Next, you can see that we've got some localization options. So we've got the defaults and fallbacks. And then we just need to use this use request localization and pass in the options. Doing this should allow all of that thread.context stuff to work magically. Another really important aspect of creating a multi-language website is a language picker. Allowing your site visitors to choose their preferred language is going to give them a fantastic experience. Now, when we're creating a single instance website, as we have in this example, creating that language switcher is pretty easy. All we basically need to do is understand all the different languages which have been enabled and then create a link to each one of those variations and then doing that, the Embraco API will take care of everything else for us. Sweet. So how do we do this? 
Now we've got our model generated by the Umbraco Models Builder. This property defines this thing called cultures. And culture is basically going to return a list of all the published content for each language against that current item. Then all we need to do with this information is iterate through all the different options. And then using things like value or the culture code, we can then query the object to get the name and the URL and the culture. So in essence, all we're doing is iterating through all the different versions of the cultures, getting the URL, and then on your front end website, all you need to do is create like a drop down list or maybe, you know, a bunch of links, have that URL appear on the website. Someone's going to click on this URL. They're going to be automatically redirected to their German Nepalese version. And then that's it. All the links will automatically be translated on that page and they can live forevermore in bliss. Before we wrap up, I want to leave you with one thought and it's all about the content strategy. Now, everything I've done so far assumes that all the page structure between your English, German, Nepalese, blah, 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 is all the same. Now, what happens when everything's very drastically different? Potentially, you want to use that subcategory approach. So in that example, what we do is create our homepage and then the name of the homepage in this instance is going to be EM. Now, what we do next is then create another homepage. Again, at the top level, we're going to call this Nepalese or Nep. I can't remember what their code is. And then there we go, we've got net. And as you can see, I've created one for the German and one for French. Now, when we have these four different home pages, we're then free to build a site however we see fit. So we're not gonna be limited by the imposing structure of just one single website. Now, the benefit of this in terms of routing is that if I now just put FE or FR at the end, you can see that my page is translating. So you could easily create a multi-language website without thinking about any of that routing by just creating different home pages within the CMS and off you go. Now, obviously, when you're creating this, you don't need to worry about setting up all those different languages. You don't actually need to allow your document types to work in multi-language mode. In most instances, you may not even need to do any of the routing. So this can be a simpler approach. The downside of this is obviously that every single time someone creates a page in one website, they're going to have to create that same page in every other website. So this only really makes sense if all the content's really different. However, when that happens, you're going to have a few different considerations. Now, when you're creating, say, the language switcher in this instance, how do you easily jump someone from the English site to the French site? When I typically go for this type of architecture, my language picker will typically just jump someone to the home page However, there's some different considerations, but I thought I would leave you just thinking about content strategy because figuring out the content strategy before you build your multi-language website is key because you want to know, are you building everything within a single website or are you building everything in multiple websites and then hooking everything up to make it look like the same website? The choice, my friend, is yours. And there we have it, my friends. I'm pretty jealous of you because now you are certified absolute multilingual badass in Umbraco and my hats are off to you. Now, at that point in the video, first, I say thank you for watching. Second, I do have an Umbraco book called Umbraco Core Mastery. So if you want to learn how to build a multi-language website, there's a whole section in there dedicated to it. The book's not very expensive. It's like 10 bucks. The link is below. And um, if you want to support this channel, that is the best way to do it. Also, if you want to be an absolute legend and show any type of appreciation for watching this video, those two things that I asked at the start, smash the subscribe button, clicking on like, basically just helps this video get shown to more people and it helps me grow my channel. And that basically makes me very happy and it makes you an absolute complete legend. Also, I do a weekly Sunday newsletter, just has some links about what I've been up to and some stuff I found useful on the web. Link is below. If you don't like it, there's an unsubscribe button. It's managed by someone else. So do that kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope you got some value from this video. I hope you're having an epic time wherever you are in the world. And until next time, my friends, happy coding.